Made in China products were extremely cheap. If it was made in China, I just felt like it was gonna break really fast. You look down, like at the tag on your clothes, it says made in China. Before, yes, the plow is very good. What's going on everybody, Fun Bros here. You guys know that we spend a lot of time analyzing the ebbs and flows in the Asian experience. And growing up, made in China products always had a connotation of being mass produced, cheap, but also kind of low quality. So we're here to ask the question in New York City, has that actually changed by 2022? Let's find out. All right, I'm here with Sam. Sam, what are some products that you know that you use like all the time that are made in China? Pretty much everything I use. You look down, like at the tag on your clothes, it says made in China. Paper, pencil, pens and stuff like that, they're all made in China. It seems like everything, right? <laughs> Growing up, what was like the perception of made in China products? They were acceptable, I guess at least to me, because I grew up minority class. The only time it wasn't acceptable is when like my mom would bring me back Jordans and they'd be like made in China instead of Indonesia and I'd just be like, mom, where did you get these? Like, they're probably not real. I know that my parents definitely were like, you don't want to play with a toy that's been made in China. Made in China products were extremely cheap. It's cheaper, less quality. They would always break. The ink wouldn't last as long. Cheap, mass produced. It was just everywhere. If it was made in China, I just felt like it was going to break really fast. So what do, what do you think now? Like, how has the perception changed? Because there's like so much more technology coming out of China. Maybe they still make some of the cheap stuff and all that, but, but they really have like, like they're making the drones and the cell phones. I've been noticing a lot of TikToks where, especially household items, they might be, they might look a little cheap and plasticky, but they've actually made your life a little bit more efficient, a lot more high tech. So it's like affordable tech now. <laughs> it makes you want to buy it. Uh, yeah. Consumer tech, cost efficient, price competitive. They also have a lot of options, right? More options for people to choose from. It's not just about brand. For them, it's about the functionality. Less about aesthetics maybe, but just pure functionality and what it could do. Useful, effective, consumer tech at an affordable price. Yes. I think Chinese products could really be worth the price and the quality. And a lot of the time, the assumption, you know, things that are outsourced to be produced are, you know, of lesser quality. And that's why people are so adamant on like buying like, American owned products. But that's not really the case anymore. Times are changing, so technology over there has gotten a lot better. The phones out there are now way more advanced from what I hear. And like all these other products that everybody used to get clowned on for. Now they're like super high tech and now they're like super in, so. This was made in China and quality is great and everybody wears them around the world so man david hearing all those stories from people really brought me back to my childhood when the made in china label had such to be honest a questionable connotation for sure i mean i remember people questioning if even if you bought like a real item in china they still thought it was fake no because everybody knew the nike sneakers were made in china but then if you told someone you bought it in china then all of a sudden it became oh a bootleg. man i remember watching vcds obviously then vcds transition into dvds and it's crazy to see the arc Andrew, because we're talking about fake sneakers right but now anta and like uh, leaning are coming out with some of the highest rated basketball performance shoes in the world in 2022. So it really kind of goes to show you this arc where China went from like cheap mass produced low quality to now just like affordable high quality. Yeah, and I will defend that even if the products back then were kind of cheap and mass produced, I always thought they were pretty functional because you had, you got an MP3 player back in the day that was actually a Chinese brand. Oh, now, super cheap. Yeah, it could hold the songs, it played fine but you had to like flip through all of them, but ultimately it was cheap and functional. And so that's why I was like, I think people still bought Chinese products because they were like, listen, who's making functional things for this price? anywhere yeah and uh i'm really glad to see that they're sort of out of that like uh hyper industrial like functional no form era and i think it's moving towards a little bit something more like uh what japan has japan has obviously really like form and function is both quite high now a lot of people are probably wondering what are the exact reasons why china's manufacturing got so good and it's two main reasons one a lot of the super cheap manufacturing did move to other countries uh like indonesia vietnam in India, and then also China's tech sector boomed. So now they're assembling iPhones, they got a Tesla factory in Shanghai, and Shenzhen is considered one of the highest tech cities in the entire world. Right, I mean, they also have their own brands in the electric car field like Neo. Um, there's like BYD, there's Geely, Li Auto, there's a bunch of stuff. And you know, just manufacturing everything for the rest of the world 
and for their own domestic market over time, they were bound to learn and make incremental improvements. And all of a sudden those incremental improvements, they become bigger and bigger. One of the uh, things that people don't really think about when it comes to made in China items is actually hair dryers. So this actually Li Fen hair dryer, Andrew, is sort of representative of where like Chinese consumer manufacturing and industrial design is going. Yeah, this hair dryer right here, according to the reviews, and we're gonna test it out ourselves, yeah. is supposed to be rivaling their top competitors, the other brands, but delivering quality at a third or fourth of the price. Yeah, that's good. That is, I mean, I'm just saying, this is, this is, look how Listen, cool guys, this is. I don't wanna say too much, but if you look up the reviews online, people will tell you the quality is there for a third or a fourth of the price of a competitor's brand. Dude. But uh, let me just turn this on real quick. So it has two levels. Okay, this is it's pretty quiet. Yeah. You know what I think is really cool though, honestly, is the LED light on the back oh. where it really indicates the temperature. I don't think anybody else has that in the game right now. Bro, this is not, what, let me get dual. Ah! All right, everybody. So after being able to use the Life and Swift and also have uh, women test it out too, I think the pros and cons are pretty clear. I think the pros, it's lightweight, it's powerful. It's got a very, very cool LED ring on the back. Dude, I love how it's easy to store. You know, you have small bathrooms in New York City. You don't have space for big old, you know, old hair dryers. This doesn't overheat either. And also there's this actually, uh, this really cool feature I figured out. There's this cycle where you hold down this temperature button and it just goes from hot to cold and it keeps doing this as one of the settings. So there's actually, yeah, there's actually a third setting too. Yeah, I mean, I think that on the con side, maybe this like air intake magnet thing could be maybe like less spinny. Yeah, I don't like how it moves. Um, I don't like how you can't really hang it up anywhere because uh, other ones you can kind of hang it up from the back. I thought that that would have been useful. Um, also, it is $160. So now that's a premium price, but I do think you're getting like an ultra premium product. Yeah, I think when you compare it in tier to its competition, its competition is more like five or $600. So at 150, 160, it's a really good deal. Also, maybe this temperature change button could be in a little bit of a different place. I could see it being easy to activate on accident just while you're using it on a regular basis. I mean, I know that they're using like 110,000 RPMs, which is really impressive in terms of like the power to weight ratio. Andrew, you were saying that it kind of reminds you of the uh, U-Scooters. U-Scooters is our favorite scooter and it packs a ton of power in a tiny, light, strong steel frame. And I feel like you know, occasionally you just get a product that is just so light and so powerful, it makes your life easier. I think moving into 2022, that's the name of the game is pound for pound. You know, yes, there are like, you can go very, very expensive on things, of course. And you know, I guess the quality would, or design would get better, but some of those things are just outside of people's regular range of like, Pricing, you know, like it's just gonna kill your pocketbook. So just pound for pound, dollar for dollar. Um, I'm looking at this, I'm like, this could be the best hair dryer in the game. Guys, and I need to tell you something. LiFen used to make passenger drone technology, passenger to carry people. So th that drone technology that they would put in the air, they are now putting it in your hair. All right, you guys, thank you so much for watching that video, guys. Please let us know in the comment section below, what do you think have Chinese products and companies improved over the years? And it's just like the connotation of made in China going away. And also please check out the Life and Swift. I'm gonna leave some links down below, guys. Pound for pound, it could be the best hair dryer in the game, but you guys check it out, test it out, and let me know how you feel about it. Until next time, we out. Peace. Peace.